objection to the Vedas, which had sunk in the turbulent sea of devastation. O Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, who have, have assumed the form of a tortoise, all glories to you. The great Mount uh, Mandara rests upon your gigantic back, which acts as a pivot for churning the ocean of milk, and which has thus been marked with a large circular scar-like depression. In this way, your back has become most glorious. O Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed the form of a boar, all glories to you. The earth, which had sunk to the bottom of the Garba Ocean, sits fixed upon the tip of your tusk like a spot upon the moon. O Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed the form of a half man, half lion, all glories to you. With the wonderfully sharp nails on your beautiful lotus uh, hands, you have ripped apart the wasp-like body of Hiranyakashipu. <clears throat> o Keshava, O Lord of the Universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed the form, uh, who have assumed a form of a wonderful dwarf Brahmana, Brahmana, all glories to you. With your massive steps, you deceived King Bali, and with the Ganges water emanating from the nails of your lotus feet. You deliver all living beings in this world. O Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed the form of Bhrigupati, Parasharam, all glories to you. You bathe the earth in the, in the river, rivers of blood from the bodies of demoniac Kshatriyas who have, uh, you have slain. In this way, you wash away the sins of the world and give relief to those who suffer in material existence. O Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed the form of Ramachandra, all glories to you. In the battle of Lanka, you de destroy the ten-headed demon Ravana and distribute his heads as a delightful offering to the presiding deities of the ten directions, a feat long desired by them all, whom that monster had much harassed. O Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed the form of a plow-wielding Balaram. Balaram! Aye. All glories to you. On your brilliantly white body, you wear garments co colored like a fresh rain cloud. And the river Yamuna, whom you frighten with the blows of your plow. O Keshava. Well, you what? You frighten. Yes, yeah. Frighten. You yeah. frighten with the blows of your plow. O Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed the form of Buddha, O glories to you, your heart filled with compassion, you decry animal slaughter, performed according to the scriptural rules of Vedic sacrifice. <clears throat> o Keshava, O Lord of the universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed the form of Kalki, O glories to you, like a comet bearing an indescribably terrifying sword, you annihilate the wicked barbarian kings at the end of Kali Yuga. O Keshava, O Lord of the Universe, O Lord Hari, who have assumed these ten different incarnations, all glories to you. O readers, please hear this most excellent hymn by poet Jayadev, for it bestows happiness and good fortune and is the best thing in this dark world. <clears throat> o Lord Krishna, I offer my obeisances unto you, who incarnate in these ten forms. In the form of Matsya, you, res you rescued the Vedas as Kurma, you bear Mount Mandara on your back. As Varaha, you lift the earth on your tusk. As Narasimha, you tear open the chest of the demon Hranyakashipu. As Bhamana, you, you trick King Bali. As Parasharam, you slay all the wicked Chatriyas. As Ramachandra, you defeat Ravana, the son of Pulashya. As Balaram, you carry a plow. As Lord Buddha, you show compassion towards all. And as Kalki, you kill the Malachas. Pralaya payod hijale dhritavan asivedam vihita vihitra charitra makhedam. Keshava Dhritta Meena Sharira 
जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे Shritire ha vipula tare tishtati tava prishthe dharani dharana kinna chakra garishthe. Keshava Dhritta Kurma Sharira Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Vasati dashana shikhare dharani tavalagna shashini kalanka kaleva nimagna. Keshava Dhritta Shukara Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Tavakara Kamala Varena Kamad Bhuta Shringam Dalita Hiranya Kashiputanu Bringam Tavakara Kamala Keshava Dhritta Nara Hari Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Chalaya si vikramane balim adbhuta vamana Padanaka nira janita janapavana Vamana Rupa Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare Jaya Jagadisha Hare
Kshatriya Rudhira Maye Jagadapagata Papam Snapayasi Payasi Shamita Bhavatapam Keshavadhritta Bhrigupati Rupa Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Vitarasi dikshurane dikpatim kamaniyam Dashamukhamoli balim ramaniyam Da Rama Sharira Daya Jagadish Hare Daya Jagadish Hare Daya Jagadish Hare Vahas, kya hua? Vahasi vapushi vishade vasanam jaladabham halahati bhiti milita yamunabham Keshavadhritta Haladhara Rupa Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Lahati bhiti milita yamunabham Lahasiva pushi vishade vasunam jaladabham Halahati bhiti milita yamunabham Keshavadhritta Haladhara Rupa Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Nindasi yagya vidhera ha ha shuti jatam sadaya hridaya darshita pashu ghatam Nindasi 
केशव धृत बुद्ध शरीर त्याय जगदीश हरे त्याय जगदीश हरे त्याय जगदीश हरे निवाह निधने कलयसि करवालाधुमकेतमिव कमी कराल निधने केशवृत्त कल की शरीर जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे श्री जय देव कवेद मुदित मुदार शृणु सुखद शुभदम अवसार केशवृत्त दश विध रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे वह शिव पुषि विषदेव सन जलदाभम हल्लाहती भीति मिलित यमुनाभम केशव धृत हल धर रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे केशव धृत हल धर रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You can blow the conch. Hare Bol, you can blow the conch. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Rama Rama Hari Hari Jai Vishnupad Paramahamsa Pari Raja Gachari Ashtotar Sada Sri Sri Madhesi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Sri Balaram Purnima Mahotsav Ki Jai Sri Krishna Balaram Ki Jai Gaura Primanande Hari Hari Bol Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasvate Deve Gauravani Pracharne Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarne Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Kanto 10 Chapter 65 Text 28 Translation and Commentary by Disciples of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Rama, Rama, Maha, Baho, Na, Jane, Tava, Vikramam, Yasya, Eka, Angshena Vidrita Jagati Jagataha Pate Rama Rama Mahabaho Najane Tava Vikramam Yas Yaikangshena Vidrita Jagati Jagata Pate Rama Rama Mahabaho Najane Tava Vikramam Yas Yaikang Shena Vidrita Jagati Jagata Pate
Jane Tababekamam. And she said, I'm saying, I'll be dritta. Jagati, Jagataf Pate. Ladies, please. Rama Rama Mahabaho. Najane Tava Vikramam. Yes, Jain Kang Shaina Vidrita. Jagati Jagataf Pate. Rama Rama Mahabaho. Najane Tava Vikramam. Yes, Jai Kang Shaina Vidrita. Jagati Jagataf Pade Rama Rama Mahabaho Najane Taba Vikramam Yes, Jai Kang Shaina Vidrita Jagati Jagataf Pade Rama Rama Mahabaho Najane Tava Vikramam Jai Kang Shaina Vidrita Jagati Jagataf Pate Rama Rama Oh Rama Rama Maha Baho O Mighty Armed One Na Jane, I do not appreciate. Tava, your Vikramam prowess. Yasya, whose Eka, one Angshena by a portion. Vidrita is sustained. Jagati, the earth. Jagataha of the universe. Pate, O Master. <coughs> Goddess Yamuna said, Rama, Rama, O mighty armed one, <coughs> I know nothing of your prowess. With a single portion of yourself you hold up the earth, O Lord of the universe. Purport. <coughs> The phrase Ekang Shena with a single portion refers to the Lord's expansion as Shesha. This is confirmed by the Acharyas. Hmm. Om Ajnana Timiranda Hasya Jana Shala Kaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrishtam Manumapi Shatiputra Matras Rupam Rupam Tas Yagrajamurupurim Maturim Goshtavartim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasham Prapto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tamnatosmi Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Taitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Namaste Halagraha Namaste Mushala Yudha Namaste Revati Kanta Namaste Bhakta Vatsala Namaste Dharani Dhara Namaste Balanam Shrishta 
Pralambare namaste stu ehi mam krishna purvaja Translation of these two verses in supplication to Lord Balaram from the Brahma Purana are as follows. Obeisances to you, O holder of the plough. Obeisances to you, O wielder of the mace. Obeisances to you, O darling of Revati. Obeisances to you, O kind benefactor of your devotees. Obeisances to you, O upholder of the earth. Obeisances to you, O best of the strong. Obeisances to you, O enemy of Pralamba. Please come to me, older brother of Krishna. Here we are far away from the land of Krishna. Is that right? We're a long way from the land of Krishna, but Krishna's here. And every land is Krishna's land. Still we think of Vrindavan as particularly the land of Krishna. Is that right? It's Radha's land. Radhe Vrindavan Ishvari. Krishna goes so many places, but Radha is there. That is that uh, Vrind Radha Padankitatam, Radha Padankitatam. Anyway, today is Balaram Purnima, not Radhashtami. And particularly on this day, wherever my miserable body is placed in this miserable world, I meditate on Lord Balaram in Vrindavan, especially when we think of when we, the followers of Srila Prabhupada, think of Lord Balaram in Vrindavan, we think of Krishna Balaram installed by Srila Prabhupada in 1975 in the temple, which he called the Krishna Balaram temple, Krishna Balaram Mandir. <coughs> he wanted to emphasize Krishna Balaram. He put them in the center, not Radha Shamasunda. He said that he did so to demonstrate, well, there are two, two reasons. One reason is that, that is the area, Raman Reti, delightful sands, where Krishna and Balaram, so many years ago, in our estimation, but hardly a flick of the eyelids in universal estimation, in Krishna's estimation, so many years ago, Krishna and Balaram spotted in Raman Reti. That was one of the places where Krishna and Balaram and the cows and the cowherd boys used to play. It's famous for that. <clears throat> Another reason Srila Prabhupada wanted to demonstrate the fact that Brajendra Nandan Jai Shachi Shuta Hilo Shai Balaram Hilo Nitai. That Garnitai are non-different from Krishna and Balaram. So he established those deities there. And also, there's uh, so many reasons. In Vrindavan, he wanted devotees to come from all over the world to get strength after preaching in these demoniac countries of the Western world they could come and be rejuvenated by taking strength. Strength means spiritual strength. Strength we get from Krishna, and especially from Balaram, we remember on this day. Krishna and Balaram as young boys playing in the sands of Raman Reti and throughout the land of Vrindavan they're not fixated on their strengths. They're not bullies. They're not showing off their strengths. They're cowherd boys who run around, and naturally they're strong. Cowherd boys are naturally strong. You probably have so many cowherd boys in this area. There's so many cows in this Bayan area, but the cowherd boys, they're all schoolboys, right? They don't look after the cows. They have to go to school. 
Krishna and Balaram didn't go to school till later. First they were cowherd boys. And naturally they become very strong because to control cows, cows are quite strong animals. You have to push them a bit uh, to get them. Sometimes you have to push them a bit to go here and there. And just the whole profession of cow keeping and then they naturally become strong and they have the sticks. They have their own... Uh, they have their own culture, the cowherd people's culture. Uh, up to the present day, the one one group of one caste of cowherders is there still in Gujarat. Who, up to the present day, they didn't give up their culture of grazing cows. They have what we think as large herds, which is maybe a hundred cows or two hundred cows which seems to us to be large nowadays, but Krishna, how many cows did Krishna have? Nine lakh cows, by estimation. Actually innumerable, but nine lakh. That means in non-Indian English, 900,000. Some of his cows. He has so many cows. How could Krishna keep a cow? Whoops. How could Krishna keep count of them all? And he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. How would he keep count of them all? How would he know? He had his beads, right? He wasn't chanting rounds. He was chanting the names of the the cows. And they'd all come one by one as he said them. How did he say the names of 900,000 cows as he was calling them? Some things are inconceivable. That name Manida, I presume that one reason, the name Manida, you all know Manida Prabhu, right? He comes here from time to time. Because Krishna holds the the uh, pearl, what do you call that? Ne rosary necklace, string of beads for counting the cows. So that's one reason. Mani, pearl, who holds. And there's also from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 7. Who knows that verse? Matav parataram nanyat kinjit asti dhananjaya mai sarvamidang protam sutre manigana eva. Krishna says, Nothing is superior to me. Matav parataram nanyat, not even slightly dhananjaya. You might be thinking of yourself a very big man because you brought so much wealth, but. Nothing and no one is superior to me. Everything rests on me as pearls are strung on a thread. So Krishna has so many cows. Krishna and Balaram, they are cowherd boys, and they're happy. Happy life, no school. They go out in the morning, they take the cows out. The cows are very happy. Cows like grass, as you might have noticed when you're around here. Did you see the cows after that? You lock them in the barn, right, during the winter and feed them all this dried grass. And what happens when you let them out in spring, first time? They're dancing in ecstasy. They like fresh grass. Well, in Vrindavan, there are no barns, per se. They're, they're just all the year. They can... Uh, graze the cows, and especially the cows become very happy. At the, everyone becomes very happy. All living beings become happy at the onset of the rainy season, after the long heat and everything is too hot, to, too hot even to breathe practically. And then the rains come and then everything becomes very green and the cows like that. There's lots of grass for them, fresh grass to eat. Otherwise they're, they're nibbling at the grass just this high and not much to eat. So Krishna is very happy when he sees the cows happy. A cow herder becomes very happy when he sees the cows happy. And naturally the, the cows in Vrindavan are very happy because it's a very suitable place for grazing cows. So that's the topmost place in the spiritual world where Krishna and Balaram play completely free from any anxiety. Vaikuntha means free from anxiety. Vrindavan is the epitome of Vrindavan. No anxiety. Simply uh, 
grazing their cows happily every day. Of course, in Vrindavan, as manifest in this material world, there are sometimes disturbances uh, in the form of demons. Children, young boys, they like to play. I don't know nowadays because the kind of education they get. They might be playing with dolls and putting petticoats on dolls. But in the normal course, young boys, they like to play somewhat masculine games. This is nowadays called gender stereotyping. But if you just leave the boys to be boys and the girls to be girls, the boys are like boys and the girls are like girls. So boys, naturally, they like to play little robust games and little wrestling and they'll pretend, uh, just like we see Lord Nityananda, he would play with his friends the pastimes of Lord Rama attacking Lanka. <coughs> so martial games, warrior-type games. So boys, they like to play like that. One is Ram, one is Lakshman, and the other side there's Ravana and Kumbhakarna, and they like to fight. Well, Krishna and Balaram in their childhood, they didn't have imaginary games. They had real demons to fight with. And the demons were the most terrifying and insurmountable in the whole world. And they kill them in play. It's fun for them, just like the... Uh, the boys, in fun, they play killing demons, or maybe, well, I have to admit, when I was a kid growing up, it was killing the Germans. <laughs> I guess that won't go too well here, will it? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I always make these politically incorrect statements? Mm. Anyway, Krishna and Balaram were killing real demons, real life demons, who would come, and they're all different kinds of demons they would kill. And it was fun for them. They were having fun. Krishna and Balaram are simply having fun. So we can go before Krishna and Balaram in Vrindavan, and naturally, all of us in this world, we all have so many cares and anxieties and sufferings. And we can just go before Krishna and Balaram and say, ah, oh, no more problem. Krishna and Balaram don't have any problem. If we go before Krishna and Balaram, we can realize that there, there is no problem. The only problem is that we are here and they are there. And we need to go and join them. Not that we're going to go and stand on the altar, but we're in this material world and we're suffering in this world because we have an attitude similar to the demons who come to attack Krishna and Balaram. They want to enjoy separately from Krishna and Balaram and they're envious of Krishna and Balaram. And because we have that attitude, we come to this material world and we suffer and we try to enjoy like Krishna and Balaram but inevitably the more we try to enjoy separately from them the more we suffer so they don't have any anxiety you can see Balaram wait a minute this is left arm leaning on the leaning on the shoulder of Krishna not a care in the world you remember that description of when the Keshi demon came to attack and Krishna, he thought, well, all the girls are here looking. So he first of all tied up his sash and make sure he looked very nice before he went to fight. He wasn't in anxiety. Uh, of course, tying the sash is also useful for fighting. It's good to have tight clothes rather than loose clothes for such activity. So no anxiety. They have, uh, Krishna has his flute. What's Krishna's flute for? It's, yeah, cowherd boys up to the present day have flutes for calling the cows. 
He also uses it for other things, such as calling the gopis, and for charming the minds of all the rishis and munis who are sitting there meditating and making the whole world, making Ananta Balaram who holds up the whole universe, making him shake and then we get earthquakes. And Balaram has a plow. What's that for? Plow. What's it for? Hmm? For tilling the land. It's for plowing. Yeah, a plow is for plowing. It's The word works as a noun and as a verb. So in this way, he also acts as a weapon. Whenever he wants, he can just cut. Plow, plow, who's a living being, servant, appears, and then it's an unusual weapon, but after all, he doesn't have to conform to stereotypes. Get hit on the head with a plow. Hmm, pretty. Srila Prabhupada wants Tamal Krishna Maharaj when Srila Prabhupada was stressing so much in the last few years from about 1974 onwards to 1977 when he left Srila Prabhupada was stressing so much on farm projects Varnashram projects and Tamal Krishna Maharaj said to Srila Prabhupada, you are the farm acharya, Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, no, it's Krishna and Balaram. Krishi go raksha. These are the two activities of the farm. Krishi means plowing, that's Balaram, and go raksha, that's Krishna. Of course, they both do go raksha. So we can meditate on Balaram with a rope in his hands that's also essential paraphernalia for cow herders for tying up the cows at the time of milking because they can be temperamental some of them some cows you don't need a rope because they're very peaceful but others they just wait till you're finished milking and the, the pail is completely full you all know you're on a farm here and then they kick the, bu the bucket over. And so it becomes Shrama Eva He Cave Alum. You, you milk the cow and you didn't get any milk. So that's for, for tying the cow's hind legs. So they don't care. And they just stay still in one spot. So you can uh, milk the cow very nicely. And a buffalo horn tucked in the sash looking like innocent boy but he is the source of unlimited strength we know Balaram as Ananta who has thousands of hoods and on each hood he holds one universe and if you ask him where he is he doesn't know because he doesn't even feel it just like if you happen to have hair on your head, most of us males don't have much, but if you have hair, and it happens to be a mustard seed, you won't feel it amid your hair. You just won't feel it. It's just too small and too light. Maybe if you rub your head or put a comb, you could feel it. But you don't feel it as any great burden. If you have to carry a whole sack of mustard seeds, that's quite heavy. But as a single mustard seed, you won't feel it at all. So Balaram, Ananta, he has the whole universe on one of his hoods and he doesn't feel it, just like you won't feel a mustard seed on your head. He's so strong. So we pray to Balaram, especially on this day, for strength. What kind of strength? The strength that we can hold a universe. We'll never be able to hold a universe. These Mayavadis, they think they're going to become God.
but they can't even lift up a bag of mustard seeds, what to speak of the whole universe. The, so it's, it's a ridiculous idea that they'll become God, but we can pray to him for strength, and especially on this day, we can pray to him for strength. Nayam atma balanena hina, the Upanishad says, that we cannot attain the atma. We cannot be spiritually realized without strength. Now, one Mayavadi self proclaimed sannyasi, he interpreted this to mean that we need physical strength for self realization. And therefore, he advocated eating meat. He wasn't a Vaishnava sannyasi. So this is a, a complete misunderstanding and a complete misinterpretation. We need spiritual strength. What is the meaning of spiritual strength? How can we get spiritual strength? We pray to Balaram for spiritual strength. How can, what, what does it mean to be spiritually strong? Any suggestions? To follow the acharyas, yeah, that will be a, a symptom of spiritual strength. Yeah. <coughs> to have strong faith, yeah, I was going to say that, which means freedom from doubts. We be strength, physical strength comes when we're healthy, right? You might have a big strong body, but if it's sick, you can't you can't do much with it. You can't walk. You might not even be able to talk much. Strength pre-necessitates health. And spiritual health means faith, which means freedom from doubts. Doubts like demons. Krishna and Balaram kill the demons. So we have... We may have so many doubts. Balaram is Adi Guru. He is the first Guru. Of course, we can say Krishna is the original Guru because he's the original everything. But his first expansion, Balaram, he's the first. So he's the first to teach about Balaram. And we get spiritual strength from our Guru and Gurus who is a manifestation of the strength of Balaram. Balaram, he doesn't have any doubts about Krishna being the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he dissipates doubts strongly in the, in the form of the Acharyas. He strongly contests any theories which are opposed to not accepting Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and not uh, <clears throat> having full faith in Krishna. So these doubts which are like demons, we m may not individually have strength to overcome them because we are very weak before maya. And Maya gives so many doubts. Actually, doubts and the tendency to engage in sense gratification, they go together. We see, generally, someone who's taken to Krishna consciousness, when they become doubtful, the next thing is they're smoking weed out the back or something similar like that. They go away because they don't have faith. Ashodadhana purusha dharmas yasya parantapa aprapya mang nevartante mrityu sangsar sagarat. Mrityu sangsar avartman. The uh, persons who don't maintain faith on the path of devotional service, they don't attain Krishna and they fall back into the materialistic way of life.
because then they start to think I am this body the world is real I am meant for enjoying this body and it's a quick tumble from on the snakes and ladders board you may be doing very well but if we become doubtful we go nine from 99 down to 1 you know that I guess kids nowadays don't play snakes and ladders they're such simple games you know that on the snakes and ladders board you get almost there you get to 99 and tumble all the way down big snake the big snake of Maya we tumble down so we should take strength from the snake Ananta Balaram we may doubt what is it? what is this A snake snake Balaram Ananta snake holds up the universe we didn't see in our telescopes any snakes in outer space it doesn't seem to make sense yeah it doesn't make sense to us because we're so small we can't even see it just like if an ant is in your hair using the same kind of example if an ant is in our hair the ant doesn't understand he's in hair he doesn't understand he's on a human body and there's not even any means to try to make him aware of that because it's just not within his capacity as an ant to understand that anything can be so big and there's human society you're sitting there working on your computer on the internet the ant is crawling in your hair and you're scrunching your hair and trying to find out what it is but the ant has no understanding how, how will you explain the internet to an ant? So how will we explain that the universe is held up by Balaram in the form of the snake Ananta to someone who doesn't believe it? They don't. You know, I don't believe it. I don't believe. It. I didn't see it. I didn't believe it. So these doubts arise because of faith, right? Doubts arise because of faith. Does that sound contradictory? Doubts arise because of faith in our own ability to understand everything by our extremely limited intelligence, extremely limited experience, and extremely limited senses. I saw in the guest house the, the, the the computer is on and on the screen they have a photo of it must be from the Hubble telescope or maybe it's from the James Webb telescope now of what we call outer space we call it outer space because we think that we're the center but it's not outer or inner or any such thing it's it's space and so many stars so, and that's just as many as you can fit in a little screen to show. It's so vast. And what do we know? So how can we know if we're like ants? The ants, we can't explain the internet to ants. How can we understand what is going on? The, the, the big picture. We're so tiny. What can we understand about the universe? It's possible by mercy. We don't have our own, we don't have enough, we don't have the apparatus to understand. But if we get mercy, the mercy is given, then we can understand. And the beginning of understanding the nature of God is to understand that it's not possible for us to understand. Another contradiction. Then you go round in circles, right? When I understand that I can't understand, that I can be, then I can understand. What can you understand? I can understand that I can't understand. And then you go round in circles. So what's the solution to all of this? Again, it's mercy. That we, when we accept the achintyatva, the inconceivable nature of the Supreme Lord, then we can understand Him. And it's not by academic qualifications as is exemplified in the story of the 
highly learned pundit, Brahmin, and the cobbler, which you probably all know, that Narad Muni was going along as usual. Narad Muni Bhajai Veena playing his Veena and glorifying Radhika Ramana. As he went along the road, he came across a cobbler. You don't see cobblers nowadays. That's a common German name, right? Schumacher. It's famous. Thing. Driving. And there's another one, some some philosopher or something. Anyway. <laughs> Just see, I get diverted by Maya, thinking of so many things. So he saw the cobbler, and the cobbler was very pleased to see Narad Muni. Oh, Narad Muni! Bowed down to him from a distance, because he's a cobbler. He thinks, I'm very unclean. I'm dealing in leather. They asked him, Narad, where are you going? I'm going to Vaikuntha to see Narayana. Ah, Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. <sighs> when you come back, please come back after you've been and tell me what you saw Narayana doing. So then Narad Muni went on and he saw a big pundit. Pundit said, oh, Narad, oh. where are you going? Narad. Not very respectful. I'm going to Vaikuntha to see the Supreme Lord. So the pundit said, okay, tell him I'll be coming soon. To tell him to have a proper welcome for me. I'm a big pundit, Brahmin, and uh, I'll be going to Vaikuntha soon, so I'll make sure everyone's ready to receive me. So, Narad went up to Vaikuntha, offered his prayers to the Lord, and the all-knowing Vaikuntha Nath, the Lord of Vaikuntha said, when you go back to see that cobbler, you'll see the cobbler and you'll see the Brahmana, tell them that I, Lord Narayana, was putting an elephant through the eye of a needle. Narad said, Tatastu, as you order, I'll do. Strange order. But who can understand the mind of the Lord? So he went, now he went back first to the cobbler. So no, he's going to the pundit first. The pundit said, oh, you're back so quickly. Did you really go to Vaikuntha? Yeah, yeah, I went to Vaikuntha. So tell me, what was Narayan doing? Oh, he was putting an elephant through the eye of a needle. Oh, you're just a bogus guru. Get out of here. <laughs> he didn't believe him. So then he goes on to the cobbler. He's not disturbed Narad because preaching means you meet all different kinds of people. He's used to it. So he goes on and the cobbler sees him and again the cobbler offers full of business. He says, ah, Narad, you had darshan of Narayana. Tell me what he was doing. What did you see him doing? Narad said, he was putting an elephant through the eye of a needle. Ah, how wonderful. <laughs> My Lord Narayana. And Narad said, Did you ever stop to consider how someone could put an elephant through the eye of a needle? How can Narayana, how can anyone put an elephant through the eye of a needle? The cobbler looked a little taken aback and said, Well, why not? He can do whatever he likes. I'm sitting under a banyan tree, huge banyan tree, and every little seed there's a banyan tree inside. Why can't he put an elephant through the eye of a needle? So by that faith, the cobbler went back to Godhead and the brahmana didn't. Faith. Faith that he can do as he likes. He has inconceivable potencies. And our duty is simply to bow down to him. So doubt. To doubt means it is impossible to be a theist. And the atheists, they commend themselves on being doubtful. 
They think it's a very great quality not to believe what they cannot prove. <laughs> As if they could prove anything. Two plus two equals four. Is it proved? Every man is mortal. What's the proof? Want to try it out? <laughs> Start killing everyone to see if anyone's immortal. <laughs> two plus two equals four. What does two mean? Give me two. Is there any two? Is there any such object as two? Can you see two? It's a concept. Two, any number, is simply a concept which we apply and we're so used to it that we think it makes complete sense. Two plus two equals four. And it does make complete sense, but it only makes sense because we can conceptualize that one object plus another object makes two objects, and two objects plus two objects equals four objects. Uh, Sometimes one plus one can equal three. Is that right? Yes. yes. How? You know. Yes. yes. He knows because he's a father. One plus one equals three, four, five, and it even it can be one point something. Uh, one point, two point something, two point something a little bigger, two point something a little bigger, and then all of a sudden it's three. As the womb expands. Mm. So it's uh, it's very good on, especially on Balaram Purnima, to pray for spiritual strength to overcome all doubts. And a very, very good way, a very good technique for overcoming doubts is to understand how small we are, how limited we are. We're contemplating the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose potencies we can hardly begin to imagine. Just like that example, even an uneducated cobbler can understand the inconceivable potencies of the Supreme Lord that he puts a ban banyan tree inside a seed. How does a banyan tree grow from a seed? How does anything grow from a seed? Now the biologists, what do they say? The biologists, botanists, what is it? There, there's, you put water and there has to be specific conditions specific to every different kind of seed and then it starts to sprout then it comes up above the earth and then by photosynthesis, sunlight, chlorophyll, all this, they can explain the mechanism. But what is it that impels a seed to do so? What, what, what is it? What's the magic? What's the fire in the equations? What is it? What's the, what is the spark of life that they cannot uh, they cannot demonstrate in a laboratory what is the nature of life. You can get a tadpole, that's what we used to do in biology class, tadpoles and frogs and cut them up and look at their insides and all kinds of horrible things that made the girls cry. And you can analyze, this is their, I don't know all the biological names, you can analyze, but what is life? What is the difference between a living frog and a dead frog? Uh, the answer, biology class. The, uh, that they cannot identify. Living force. The supreme living force, the supreme consciousness, the supreme powerful, Krishna, Balaram, all power comes from him. 
Now we may say that, well, we see power, we see energy without life. We say life comes from life, all power comes from life. And they say, no, 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 it's just energy is everywhere. Energy is everywhere, everything is energy. The wind blowing, it's because, why, why does the wind blow? Do we have any meteorologists here? The, there's uh, the movement due to the, due to the uh, different, the sun is shining in one place and there's a cloud in another place, so it's hotter in one place and cooler in another place, so the, the air becomes lighter in one place and warmer in another place and that causes it to move and this and that. And sometimes they can even bring, the wind can bring sand from the Saharan desert. Does it happen here sometimes? Happens here also. It becomes very strange. Yeah, it becomes all, sky becomes red and, the, and if there's rain then it becomes all red. So all kinds of wonderful things go on in nature. But we say it's nature. It's just nature. It's just interaction of material forces. It's natural. But why is it natural? Why should it be like that? The answer is that behind everything is a person. There's the wind god. And behind the wind god is Krishna. Everything's going on by plan. Everything's going on by design. It doesn't come into being abracadabra or just by random interaction of chemicals. Where did the chemicals come from? What's the scientific answer? The scientific answer is abracadabra. <laughs> there was nothing. A long, long time ago, the grandchildren is sitting on the lap, a long, long time ago, there was nothing. 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 And nothing exploded. And out of that explosion, everything came into being. And it all settled down in exactly the right way so that I can sit you on my lap and tell you all these fairy stories. But we who have taken shelter of Balaram don't believe it. Ultimately, what the theists and the theists, they say, they say, we've got science. But it's all based on belief. Ultimately, it's all based on belief. That's all. So we happen to believe, by the grace of Balaram, we happen to believe that the power comes from a powerful, which makes sense. Power comes from the powerful. Everything is orchestrated. It's not going on by chance. And the supreme powerful is Krishna. That's what we say usually. But today we say Balaram. Which is true because Balaram and Krishna are the same. But particularly we think of, of Balaram as demonstrating the strength of Krishna. Who's more strong, Krishna or Balaram? Balaram's the elder brother. And Mother Yashoda always wants Balaram to be with Krishna to protect him. Krishna needs protection, so Balaram has to go with Krishna. But when Srila Prabhupada was asked about this, he said, Krishna is the most powerful. And he gave evidence. The evidence is that Balaram, he's leaning on Krishna, and Krishna's supporting him. You can see? He, he didn't say it whimsically. He gave evidence. So Krishna is the most powerful, but Balaram, he exemplifies that strength. And another feature of Balaram that is Krishna, he's non different from Krishna, but also the beauty of the Supreme Lord is especially manifest in the person of Balaram. So, we go to Balaram, praying for strength. The, the basis of strength is faith in devotional service. To, to 
all doubts can be cut. Uh, we can have full faith. If we have full faith, then even if we don't understand everything, we can understand. I understand that I don't understand, but still, Krishna must be supreme and go on without being disturbed. Otherwise, there can be a danger from being too spe too learned, too speculative. We should apply our intelligence to understand the teachings of the Shastra. But at the same time, we should recognize the limits of our intelligence. Otherwise, we get lost. We get lost in various speculations. I recently read a three volume, each volume is this thick and this big and it's whoosh, a, a history of Indian philosophy which which uh, it just summarized some of the major philosophical schools and there's so so many and they're all <laughs> very complex and very intricate. It, it certainly uh, it certainly leaves just have faith in the Bible in the dust. Just, just believe. You're just supposed to believe. But there's so many highly intelligent people came out with so many highly intelligent, complex theories about the nature of reality. And when we're talking about what they call Indian philosophy, many of them were atheistic. No, they're not all theistic. Atheistic in the sense that they don't... Atheistic, we say... Vedna mania bodh hoy nonastic. Not accepting the Vedas means that one is an atheist. Na asti, nastic. We don't accept that it is. Uh, in the English definition of atheist, one who doesn't believe in a supreme controller, supreme God. So we find that many of these uh, philosophers, they're atheistic. Out, out, some reject the Vedas altogether, the, the, particularly the Buddhists, the Jains, and the Charvakas. But even, and they don't accept that there's any supreme person or supreme god. And within the Vedic culture, there are those who would strongly object to being called atheists, but who are atheists. The, the Mayavadis, who accept the existence of Ishvara, but then they think that Ishvara is also a product of Maya. And what is Maya? How can there be illusion when everything's all one? And that is simply, they don't say inconceivable, they say indescribable. So they're very... Uh, Intelligent, very deep thinkers, very complex thinkers. But it's mercy to have faith in the Supreme Lord and to to accept Jive Surupai Krishna Nityadas, all the Vaishnav Sampradayas accept this as a fact that we are living beings eternally the servant of Krishna. So to have that faith that takes mercy and that gives us strength the strength to realize that we have no strength we're tiny 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 so tiny we have no strength but we get spiritual strength by the grace of Balaram we get spiritual strength by which we can come close to Krishna. How can we come close to Krishna? He's so powerful. It would be very dangerous for us to come very close to someone so powerful, just like it's very dangerous for the ant if he's not on our head, if he's under, if he's under our foot, if he's on the pathway. It's very dangerous to come close to anything so big. Uh. In, in the uh, what's that called the jet stream of the of the airliner 
the slipstream. It, if you get caught in it, it's very powerful. You get blown away. So how? Maybe there are some birds who, or another example that's more shastric. The uh, the elephant is actually from Ram Charitmanas. The elephant is swept away in the strong flood, the the river in spate. But the fish swims happily, even against the current. How is that possible? Because the fish has taken shelter of the water. So in the same way, we cannot approach the powerful. It's too powerful. We get, we'll get destroyed if we come close. But if we take shelter of the powerful, then we become strong. We, we get we partake of the same nature. If we come close to the sun, we get burned up. But if we get the body, fiery body, then we can live in the sun very happily. So if we have spiritual, if we reawaken our spiritual nature, then we can live close to Krishna. He'll accept us. But that requires spiritual strength. And another uh, suggestion, what spiritual strength means, means to stay on the path. That also requires strength, to keep on following, year after year after year, maybe lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. How will we do that? And that requires strength. If we ask devotees, there must, there must be several devotees here staying at this community who have been practicing Krishna consciousness for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. If we ask them, how do you stay? How have you managed to stay when so many go away? If, if, if you analyze, it, what does it come down to? It comes down to mercy. Our own resolve to stay on the path and the mercy to do so. So mercy comes down. We're standing before Balaram praying for strength to keep me strong on the path. We require strength. Otherwise we get washed away. So many get washed away. And for that, we also stay strong on the path means there is a specific path. There are so many paths. There's the path delineated by the Acharyas, then there are side paths which we may take, which is the path delineated by the Acharyas modified by our own desires, compromised, the compromised path. But the compromised path, that's, a, that's branching off, just like coming into Yandel's Brun by road, there's a diversion. So you go off, it's a longer way and well it comes back again but you have to get, eventually you have to get back on the right path. Otherwise you don't reach. And there may be other paths which just go off and they don't come back at all. And they might, instead of just going off they go right down also. That's in the Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. A, uh, a Christian preacher, he made a book called The Pilgrim's Progress in which there's the straight road going to heaven and then there are so many side roads and different people come and say, hey, why don't you come over here? You're going to enjoy yourself here. Take a little break from that. Uh, there's a side road you can go and someone says, here, here's a quick way to go, shortcut. But any path except the prescribed path will not take us to the desired goal. So we have to remain strong on the path and it takes strength because it can be difficult. It will be difficult. There will be difficulties. It's not that when we take to Krishna consciousness, ah, ah, now everything's nice. Now everything's nice. And yes, it actually does become very nice, but there will be so many tests. There'll be so many tests and we have to pass them with fortitude, determination, 
We have to, based on faith, that this, I, I just have to remain on this path. If I remain on this path, Krishna, who is very merciful, will ultimately bestow his mercy on me. And that is it, that is mercy. Just the, just to be able to stay on the path is mercy in and in it, in itself. So, when we come before Krishna Balaram, we can pray for strength to remain on the path. Otherwise, prapya punya kritam lokam ushitvan shashvate mata suchinam srimatam gehe yoga brashto bijayate We may get, we if we don't complete our path in Krishna consciousness, then we may get born again in a good family, a devotee family. But how long does it go on? How many, it can be that Again, in the next life, you don't make full success. And again, you practice Krishna consciousness to some extent. And again, you get born again. I don't know, there's some of our Vaishnav youth here, is it? Some of you, your children of devotees? Any here? They, oh, they're coming later, is it? Some are living here, probably. Here's uh, Abhimanyu is a grandson of Dvibuj Prabhu who's at the farm which is called New Talavan in southern United States. Dvibuj is a Prabhupada disciple and he's lived at that farm all his life and he is one of his grandsons. So there's the the festival is there coming or it's get together, right? But I don't know if it's too sensitive, you can tell me, but too sensitive to tell them that you must be in that situation. If you're born in a devotee family, you're in that situation described in Bhagavad Gita of someone who was a devotee in the last life and you're getting born again in devotee family and how many times do you want to do that? <laughs> it's time to, time to get serious so you don't get born again and again and again in a devotee family and come to the reunions but the real reunion we want is to go back to Godhead that's the real meaning of bhakti yoga to get completely linked with Krishna in devotional service another thing and this is really they, they may or may not like it is that why I see so many young men who are children of devotee they have long hair I think they were probably hippies in their previous life and they saw Prabhupada and they got the chance, but the but Prabhupada, he they didn't have much, but the thing they were most attached to was their hair, and Prabhupada, zzz, well, they didn't have zzz buzzers. We it was just a scissors and razors. That gave strength. It's reverse process. Samson, his strength is in his hair, right? And they cut it all off, and he didn't have it. But our process is in reverse. You get spiritual strength by surrender. And a symptom of surrender, it was very difficult for the, for the hippies in many cases. Their hair and their dogs and their girlfriends. It was very difficult to give up. Well, Prabhupada said you can keep your girlfriend, but she has to chant Hare Krishna also. And you have, and you have to get married. So it, it takes great strength and that comes from conviction that this is what I have to do. I've been in this situation so many lifetimes. Now I have to make us, now I have to do that. Why, why did I mess it up last time, and the time before, and the time before, and the time before? Now is the time of Lord Chaitanya's movement. Prajendra Nandanje Shachi Shuta Hoiloshe Balarama hilo nitai, dina hino joto chilo, harinaame udharilo, tarshaki jagai madhai. This Krishna and Balaram have have come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, and they're lifting up all the fallen souls in Kali Yuga by Harinam, and it's not just talk, they actually did it, seeing Jagai and Madhai, and then Srila Prabhupada picked up so many much worse <laughs> well, Jagai and Madhai even Rupan Sanatan said, we are much worse than Jagai and Madhai and 
What is our situation? It was inconceivable. What is the proof that Krishna consciousness is real? The proof is Srila Prabhupada going to the Western countries. That's one of the proofs. How is it that people so far away, so f removed from Krishna consciousness, could take to it at all? That is by spiritual strength, which Srila Prabhupada brought. Spiritual strength, the, the strength and mercy, they come together in Krishna consciousness. Strength means we get it. Mercy, which rejuvenates, which gives us spiritual strength, rejuvenates us. In the material world, strength is usually used for, or in the demoniac outlet, it's used for exploitation, bullying, controlling others for one's own ends, their, their exploitation. But strength in spiritual existence means just helping others, bringing them up, giving them strength, sharing the strength. So that is Balaram. What's the program this morning? They, they already went to take it, is it? 9.42, according to this. Some services are starting. Okay. Well, what I suggest we do, just to finish this session, is we sung the Dashavata Stotram, which is a well-known song within our ISKCON, in which Lord Balaram's Yamuna Karshan Leela is described. And we can sing another song, which is well-known within our ISKCON, which also describes Lord Balaram. So we'll sing that. Can anyone think what it is? Any? Yeah. Jaya Rama Ghata Jaya Rohini Nandan. What's the first line of that song? Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan. Let's sing that and we'll finish that for this session. Is that all right? Okay. So please get your song books or if you if you can follow just by hearing, that's also very good. Or your... Uh, use harmonium. Uh, well, actually Prabhupada, although he did sometimes do it himself, he said not to use it in the temple room. I'm trying to find that quote. but uh, Anyway, it's your temple, so I'm a visitor. You do what you like. If I stay here more than three days, I stop to be a visitor. So I'm leaving after three days. You can do as you see best in the service of Krishna and Balaram. So we got it. You got it. Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan, Jaya Radhe. Shri Gobinda Gopinata Madana Mohan Give them a songbook. Give them songbooks. Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Shama Kunda Kalindi Yamuna Jaya Jaya Mahava
Kishi Ghatha Vangshi Vartha Dvadashakana Jahasha Balila Koilo Shinanda Nanda Shinanda Jashoda Jaya Jaya Gopaga Shridama di Jaya Jaya Dhenu Bhatshagan Jaya Brisha Bhanu Jaya Kitida Shundari Jaya Pauna Masi Jaya Abhira Nagari Jaya Jaya Gopishwara Vrindavanama Jaya Jaya Krishna Shaka Bhattu Dijara Jaya Rama Ghatta Jaya Rohini Nanda Jaya Rama Ghatta Jaya Rohini Nanda Jaya Jaya Vrindavana Basi Jato Jan Jaya Dvija Patni Jaya Naga Kanyaga Bhakti Te Jahara Pailo Govinda Chara Shri Rasa Mandala Jaya Jaya Radha Shya Jaya Jaya Rasa 
Lila Sarva Manara Jaya Jaya Jwala Rasa Sarva Rasa Sa Parakiya bhave jaha brajete pracha Parakiya bhave jaha brajete pracha Sri Dina Krishna Dasa Kahe Nama Shankitan Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna Jaya Vrindavan Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan Jaya Govinda Gopinath Madana Mohan Jaya Govinda Gopinath Madana Mohan Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna Jaya Vrindavan Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna Jaya Vrindavan Shri Govinda Gopinath Madana Mohan Shri Govinda Gopinath Madana Mohan Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Jai Sri Krishna Balarama Ki Jai Balarama Purnima Mahotsav Ki Jai Gora Prabhanande You want to announce about the new app? <laughs>